Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we're going to play Leafy Lake and trust me when I say that we're going to do some really groundbreaking stuff in this one, literally. To be able to afford all of that, the first thing we're going to do is set the entrance price to 60 bucks, as that's the minimum that guests are able to spawn with. Well, actually first to 50 for a bit, as somehow the guest that is already walking towards the entrance when you load up the park only has 50 euros on them. Next, it's time for a merry-go-round and some stalls. We'll decorate them later, but first we need to run all advertisements so that we actually will get guests. Because of the high entry price, almost no guests will spawn naturally, but when you advertise, the price doesn't matter. Don't say that this is unrealistic, as advertising a lot for a park that is way too expensive is exactly what Disney does, and it works. For the decoration of the merry-go-round I went with a simple flower bed pattern and some trees behind it. The idea here is that you build up in stages. In the front are the very low flower beds, behind it is the taller merry-go-round and at the back are the big trees looming over everything. I first built the merry-go-round against the park fence but it actually looks better if it's one tile away from it so that the tree line can fully go around it. We're not going to build on the lake yet, so our first coaster will be a steel mini squeezed in between the path and the edge of the park. My first idea was to do a helix in the back, then return to the front and finally return to the station, but there is simply not enough space to do that. So that had to be changed to doing another loop first before doing the helix and then finishing the ride. We only have the standard 6 scenery themes in this scenario, so it's time to get out the trees. The coaster is quite compact and there isn't a lot of space, so fitting in big trees is quite difficult. Therefore, I switched to quarter tile trees, which you can squeeze in in many more places, such as the middle of the small helix. Lastly, I built some bushes, which complete the picture. I also built a nice little station building, making use of the pointed roof piece, which is the best roof piece in the entire game. I've seen people build big cool buildings around flat rides before, so I wanted to give that a go as well with a ferris wheel. It's my first time building anything like that, so it's not going to be too crazy, but I think it turned out really well. The paths going down the front of the ferris wheel look really nice, and the brick walls and roof in the middle provide some substance. Once again we see the pointed roof piece, which really makes it all come together. The only downside is the pillars that hold them up. The problem with these pillars is that it is a wall piece, so you cannot get them in certain corners because the path is in the way. The result is that some of these pillars are on the wrong side of the edge of the tile, which is a shame, but I'm still really happy with the build. During the construction of this ferris wheel we hit the goal requirements of 500 guests and 600 park ratings, so we don't have to worry about that at all. We just need to make sure that we still have that at the end of year 3. The food stalls in between still look a bit bare, so let's build a building around it. Instead of using bricks here, I went for some brightly colored walls that have windows in them. All the walls, except for the ones at the front, are on the inner edge of the tile. The reason for that is that the stalls are quite tall and if I had built the front wall on the inner edge too, I could not have built the blue pieces in front of the stalls, as the stalls would be in the way. The roof consists of a few brick roof pieces with the pointed roofs once again at the very top. It's now time for a real roller coaster. The steel mini coaster is cool and all, but with the highest drop height of 7 meters, it's more of a gentle ride, really. This looping coaster, on the other hand, has two vertical loops and a top speed of 60 km per hour, which is more like it. With it going through its own loops, the name Thread the Loop seems appropriate. Once again I got out the trees and bushes to make it look nice and in addition got out the terrain tool and changed about half of the terrain to the dirt and grass mixture. This looks so much nicer than the flat grassy terrain and I recommend you all to try this. There is no real method to what I'm doing, I'm just dragging around the tool and clicking rapidly. 
Let's quickly compare the stats of the looping coaster and the steel mini coaster. Somehow the mini has a higher intensity rating than the looping coaster. I have never understood that despite clearly being meant for kids and for families, the junior and steel mini coaster types have a surprisingly high intensity rating. You may be wondering why you're now looking at me building a wall below this path above the water. This is because by doing that it cuts off a nice little bit of water that I can build a boat higher in. With the wall in place the guests won't be able to go under the path and get lost on the lake. However, as I was saving the game the first guests on the right immediately crossed the park fence and paddled up the river. I completely forgot that boats can do that and it might become a problem depending on how far guests will go away from the station. There is a bit of space left between the looping coaster and the boat hire which is perfect for a custom built maze. I use a very easy and quick method to build a good looking solvable design. First I built a single path from the entrance to the exit and then I fill in the rest of the space with various dead ends. To make sure that guests aren't stuck in this maze forever, I built a tower next to it with a sniper in it that will shoot and kill any guests that are too slow. The sniper in question is a bit of a weird guy and likes to wear a furry costume to work but he's never missed a shot in his life. Building these rides in the narrow spaces is starting to feel a bit claustrophobic so I'm finally going to make use of, no not the lake, but rather the space in the back. It's time for a big wooden coaster. This is Roller Coaster Tycoon 1's classic wooden coaster so it doesn't have things like banked sloped turns and steep turns but you can still make a really cool design with it. Lots of hills and turns all over the place are an excellent way to make a good looking wooden coaster. A water splash at the end finishes off the ride nicely. As opposed to the few trees I built around the previous two coasters, here I'm going to build a proper dense forest. There are ways of building realistic forests, but those are way above my level and would probably take too long anyway. I only have about 2 hours and 40 minutes to build the entire park so I can't waste that on building a detailed forest. For the bushes underneath I used the scatter tool that OpenRCT2 provides which saves even more time. I will never get tired of looking at a nice big woody like this. There's just something about the wooden coaster that makes it look so incredibly good so easily. Really all you have to do is build a design that doesn't look too ridiculous and yeet some trees around it and it will look fine. With more than 130,000 euros in the bank from constant advertising and a 60 euro entrance fee we have now saved enough money to build the centerpiece of the park. The reason I haven't been building on the lake is that I'm going to remove it entirely. Not only that, I'm going to build a big hill in its place, hence the title of the video. Landscaping isn't my strong suit but with the method of avoiding big flat surfaces and long straight edges as much as possible the hill came out rather nicely. It took quite a while to perfect the shape and the adjustments became smaller and smaller but the end result is definitely worth it. A grassy hill is a bit boring so let's paint the terrain a little. And whoops, I still had it on landscaping mode and now the hill is ruined. It's not too bad and fairly easy to fix but I would really love an undo button in this game. For the terrain I had the idea to go from grass to dirty grass to dirt to stone for a nice gradient. To make it look nice the changes shouldn't be abrupt but rather quite slowly with a bit of overlap between each terrain type which is called dithering. It actually makes no sense at all that the hill is just bare stone on top as if it were a tall mountain as it's only 12 meters tall. Even my country of the Netherlands has hills taller than that. I'm going to build only one ride on this hill and it's going to be a big long epic mine train coaster. 
It starts out at the top with a modestly tall chain lift and then there's lots of hills, turns and helixes all around the mountain. I was careful to make sure that the coaster was roughly evenly spread out on all sides, otherwise the side without track would look weirdly empty. The mine train coaster really is perfect for this as it's the ultimate terrain coaster. There is no single coaster type that looks better when going over rugged hills. Speaking of rugged, I think I'm going to call this coaster Rugged Run. Yeah, that's a good sounding name. I had a bit of trouble at the end as the train had lost almost all of its speed, so I had to put in a small second chain lift to make it back to the station. With the entrance and exit paths built, you know what time it is. It's tree time. My idea for this forest was to have mostly coniferous trees at the top and deciduous trees at the bottom. Once again not strictly separated as that would look weird and also isn't realistic. With some bushes added I really like the way that this hill turned out. It is definitely one of the better mountains I've built in Roller Coaster Tycoon and one thing that helped is keeping it fairly small. If I had tried this on a much larger scale it would probably have been too overwhelming to detail it and not have turned out so great. I also would not have been able to afford that here specifically as my finances already almost ran out when making this hill. Even though the main attraction has been completed, the park is far from finished and we have some really cool rides yet to come. Firstly, a compact narrow wooden wild mouse coaster. With the access to the tiny turns, the various wild mouse coaster types are great for squeezing into any tight space. I named this one Mouse after my childhood mouse plushie. She is missing both feet, hands, eyes and one ear and has massive holes all over her head but I promise she's still alive and doing quite well. The only space left now is at the very back. There is one thing this park is still missing in my opinion which is a nice lake so I'm going to build one in the flat area behind the hill. It would have been cool if there was a lake as part of the landscape at the start but it's fine I'll just build one myself. Lakes always look better with bushes lining the edge and I also added a few flower beds in the four corners to add some much needed color. This area is quite far away from the entrance where the food court is so we should have another one here. This is where the pointed roof piece returns and makes another appearance, I just can't get enough of it. Since there is a lake here a water ride is really fitting so it's time for a log flume. With exactly one reverser piece, half the time the boats will be going forwards and the other half they'll be starting off backwards. Apart from the standard trees and bushes, I also built a few other things. There is this small thing, which is the final appearance of the pointed roof piece and I built a nice queue line building along with a tunnel for the first lift hill. Unfortunately the edge of the track is visible through the walls which is a bit of a graphical glitch but if I had built the walls on the other side of the edge it would look weird where they connect to the roof pieces. There is a little bit of space between the food court and the log flume which is perfect for a little garden that consists of some nice brightly colored flower beds and a few fountains. The fence around it makes it look really neat and orderly which I quite like. The last ride to be built in this park are a launched freefall and a spinning wild mouse coaster. This isn't my greatest design but the deadline of the scenario was rapidly approaching so I had to rush it. To decorate it I simply expanded the forest from the wooden coaster. Ultimately it's not bad but I could have done a lot better with this space if I had more time. Finally there is one more bit of space left on the other side of the food court which is perfect for another garden. It will have different kinds of flower beds and this time it has some statues in the middle. I also moved over the other garden one tile so that they are both one tile away from the food court building. And that's it, apart from a few little touch ups such as recoloring the spinning wild mouse coaster and putting some trees behind the first food court, the park is now finished. I am really quite proud of what I've managed to build here in less than 3 hours. The front of the park has a few compact coasters, some nicely decorated flat rides and a massive mine train coaster on a big hill in the middle. The back half has a cool wooden coaster, a nice log flume, lots of trees and some lovely gardens all around a calming lake. 
And with that we easily beat the scenario with more than 2000 guests in the park. Thank you advertising. If you want to see the previous video in this playthrough series, click right here. It's about the Dynamite Dunes. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.